You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. Ted Liebman here, the voice of the OHL's Niagara Ice Dogs, and you're listening to OHL Overtime, an in-depth interview show highlighting the players, coaches, and broadcasters from around the Ontario Hockey League who make the league so great. Exclusively on the Armchair GM Sports Network, now, here's your program host, Brandon Caputo. Welcome in to another installment of OHL Overtime right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network. As always brought to you by Wild Bill's Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road in Niagara since 2012 and honor the late William Robert Hunter, the proud show sponsor of OHL Overtime, Wild Bill's Auto Repair. Guys, if you're enjoying the video content on the network, please make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, smash that bell for all updates on video versions of our podcast that get released here on the network. And if you're listening to us on demand on all of our audio platforms, Thank you very much for that. You can follow the podcast on X at Armchair GM Pod. As well, we are available on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, all of uh, the social media platforms by following the Armchair GM Sports Network if you're into that sort of content. As always, I'm your host of OHL Overtime. My name is Brandon Caputo. You can follow me on X at B Caputo underscore AGM. Today's episode, as you can see in the video thumbnail, We are going to be highlighting the Barry Colts. The player interviews that we've got lined up for you include Cole Baudouin, forward for the team, projected on the 2024 NHL draft list. Currently late first, second round to a second round pick at this point to begin the OHL season. So look forward to talking to Cole about his mindset going into his NHL draft year. We're also going to speak to Bo Akey, the Edmonton Oilers second round draft pick and defenseman for the Barry Colts, who's learned a lot from guys like Brant Clark and Nathan Allenson coming up through the that great program that Marty Williamson runs in Barry. And then as well, a local connection here uh, in Niagara, forward Ty York, the Niagara Falls native now living in, residing in Niagara in the lake uh, during the offseason. And cool story about Ty and how he grew up playing under Marty Williamson here in uh, minor midget uh, in the Niagara region. And then ending off today with the head coach and general manager of the Barry Colts, Marty Williamson, obviously uh, in his past has coached uh, the Niagara Ice Dogs to two championship appearances in the Ontario Hockey League and has developed uh, so many great players that have gone on to do great things at the pro level. So really looking forward to having Marty on the show as well. So three player interviews and one coach slash management interview today for you, uh, highlighting the Barry Colts going into this season. So the first uh, interview today will be Cole Baudouin, and that'll be brought to you by j Flooring. If you think you can get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack. Contact their Niagara Falls location to begin your next quality flooring project today. That would be j Flooring. Here is 2024 draft eligible forward and currently current member of the Barry Colts, Cole Baudouin. Back on OHL Overtime with Barry Colts forward Cole Baudouin. Cole, when I watched your draft profile last year, you had said that there were some bragging rights going on between yourself and your father, him being a second round pick in the OHL, 30th overall. You obviously went in the first round, 10th overall to Barry. Was that moment like when you were able to you know, have that bragging right over your dad? Yeah, definitely. Definitely nothing crazy. He's obviously super proud of me, but obviously just... Just something, maybe just something that we're together as a family, just little little chirps here and there, but obviously super, super proud of me. So yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. How uh, important was he for you in the in the whole process and e- even now just helping you through the grind of what an OHL season can be like? Being able to lean on somebody like that, I'm sure that's definitely something that uh, you try to take advantage of when you can. Yeah, he's definitely been a huge huge role model for me and he's helped me all the way till basically now and he keeps helping me. He's telling me little things to get better on so I definitely love having him right beside me and it's been a huge help for me and um, hopefully uh, good things can come this year but yeah he's been a huge help taught me so many little things so it's been been such an amazing guy. Uh, You went away to the Gretzky Halinka Cup and you won a gold medal there just uh, what was that experience like being there with so many other great talented players putting on that Canada jersey I'm sure that was something that you dreamed of watching World Juniors as a kid and just how motivating was that being able to put on the team the Hockey Canada sweater and be out there with such a hop in players and and go out there and and win the gold medal. Yeah definitely a huge honor to put on that jersey and wear that Canadian leaf on my on my on my chest there but 
obviously crazy to uh, play for Team Canada, but also super fun to meet new people. Uh, see new see people that I've already met, play with a bunch of the old guys. Um, but playing with like Richie, I knew him when I was a little kid, so um, that was super cool. But obviously, such an amazing experience. You dream of that since you're a kid. I've been watching hockey since I was like three, four. So watching that when I was young, and then when I kind of get older and being able to play and being that person, it's it's crazy. And um, it was such a crazy experience. And obviously, to win gold is even better. You're a Canada boy, obviously a, a 6'2 center listed on elite prospects. I don't know if there's a, if, if, if you agree with that or not, but growing up in that area, was there a certain player that you really wanted to kind of mold your game after and that you've kind of looked up to when you were younger and as you've kind of grown into a hockey player yourself that you're really trying to be like one day? Yeah, obviously being a centerman and I really take responsibility in the defensive zone, but then also in the offensive zone. So I like to say Patrice Bergeron and Chris Kreider just because Bergeron Really good in the defensive zone. Won like six or seven Selkie trophies. So he's really <laughs> responsible. And he's good on draws, which I think I'm really good at. And then also Chris Kreider, just because he's heavy on the forecheck, good in the corners, gets, gets the loose puck, good down low, and then gets the net and scores those important goals. So definitely those two guys have definitely been been my uh, models after that I've been looking up to. But yeah, it's been it's been crazy. Yeah, I'm sure it's been a whirlwind for you. But looking back on your rookie year, you know, what did you really learn from from that whole experience? Playing in the second round of the playoffs, losing in seven games to North Bay. What did you and your team really learn from that whole experience? And and you personally of what it takes to get to the ultimate goal of you know winning an OHL championship and just the grind of the season and the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. As the season goes on, it's 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 tough. But then once the playoffs come around, it's it's a battle and. You're playing every other day. Um, you're you're traveling a lot. You're playing in front of crowds that are loud. So it's it's definitely a battle. And the, the team now, and I think we have some returning players that don't want to do that again. So I think we're going to push this year and uh, see what we can do this year. And hopefully we can have a really good run at it this year. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely, we've learned a lot from last year going into Game Seven and just just losing two one, which which really sucked. But um, last year was. A good good rookie year for me. I, I learned a lot, and I think going into this year, I think uh, I have a lot of confidence in myself and hopefully have a really good draft year. What is Coach Marty Williamson? Obviously, he's been in the league for a long time and coached some great players that have gone on to have great NHL success or, or pro success, what have you. What has he really been demanding of you as you go into your second year that he really wants to see from you to, to really make that, that jump and that step because it is your draft year and obviously there are a lot of expectations on you. So how do you kind of, what has he kind of told you about what he's expecting from you to take a big step and just your self expectation you're putting on yourself as you go into your NHL draft year? Yeah, he's definitely been a huge help for me. He's teaching me a lot of different things, every practice, games, just little tips that, that help me a lot. Um, but just, just, just to keep working, keep playing my game, play with defense responsibly, uh, not changing the way I play, not cheating for offense, not any of these things. Don't worry about points. Just play the way I play, which is hard on the floor check, good defensively. Uh, I get to the net, all those, all those little things. And I think uh, all, the, all the scouts and everyone will realize, and I think it'll be a really good year, but I just got to keep working keep getting better every day and good things will come from that and last question for you going off of that how do you put those expectations aside because you know the scouts and and everything draft lists will have you on it and things like that so how do you kind of just put all that aside and focus on the day-to-day with your teammates and and take it game by game with uh knowing what could come next june yeah obviously there's going to be lists here and there from different people but just gotta put that aside and just play hockey at the end of the day just just going out there play hockey do what i love to do that's be on the ice be with all the guys all my buddies um and just just have fun with it enjoy the experience enjoy my draft year but then also try to try to do as well as possible i've been working really hard over these off seasons and i think i've prepared myself really well and i think i can do really well so just just keep working at it every day in practice and know that I am a really good player and that I can do good things in this league. Barry Colts forward, Cole Baudouin. Cole, thanks so much for taking some time to do this, and best of luck this year with Barry and going into your draft year. We look forward to seeing what you're going to do this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you to Cole for that interesting chat, his father being a former OHLer as well. Some bragging rights there uh, with with Cole being drafted ahead of his father, and then as well just talking about his development and the, the way that his dad has helped him through that, and, and as well with, with Coach Williamson. And interesting player uh, comparisons as well for 
Colbert Duan. So thank you to him for that uh, that chat and wish him all the best go as he goes into his NHL draft year. So our next player interview is going to be with Edmonton Oilers def- defensive prospect and current Barry Colts defenseman Bo Aiki. And that'll be brought to you by the Niagara Golf Lounge, Niagara's home for golf and sport all year round, which features two state-of-the-art indoor golf simulators, allowing you to play some of the world's best courses all year round. Located at the Best Western Karen Croft Hotel in Niagara Falls, visit NiagaraGolfVacations.com to learn more and to book your golf bay today. So here is Barry Colts defenseman, Edmonton Oilers second round draft pick in the 2023 NHL draft, Bo Aiki. Please be back on OHL Overtime with Barry Colts defenseman and Edmonton Oilers second round draft pick in the 2023 NHL draft. That would be Bo Aiki. Bo, first off, what was that whole process like getting drafted and, and the whirlwind of, you know, going through the a, a Canadian market? Edmonton, obviously, um, there's there's a lot of media attention that goes around that and, and being there for the rookie camp. Like, how was that whole experience and, and being drafted to Edmonton and now coming back to, to Barry for another OHL season? Yeah, it's, it's pretty special. You know, they got one of the best facilities in the league and I think one the best fan base in the league and I don't know in that one preseason game they got pretty rowdy and got pretty loud so it's just like a cool experience to experience the NHL lifestyle for a couple of weeks and see what they do and uh, had fun in 10 ticks and at the rookie tournament uh, had a good team um, showcased well there and had lots of fun did uh did you speak to the coaching staff or anybody there that uh, what they want to see from you going back uh back to the ohl this year about you know what they want to see you take another step in in your game or what are you just trying to work on maybe this year that as an improvement from last year yeah just generally improving you know getting one uh one percent better every day i think that's the main thing they sent me back uh to junior with just you know getting that pro uh that pro game style and that pro play uh more in, into my my game style here in Barry, so uh, just looking to do that this season. And you've been with this team for a while now. You've had a couple of uh, of playoff runs. I know the one against North Bay stung last year. You know, losing in Game Seven. But what, what do you take from the last couple of playoff experience that you guys have had? Hopefully, try to take that next step forward and, and use that uh, as a as a learning experience. Yeah, definitely uh, a bit of a shocker. The last couple of years have had good teams, uh, and definitely looking to you know carry that fire in my stomach into this year and next year's playoffs and hopefully uh, make something out of this team this uh, the next couple of years. You've played with a couple of, uh, of, of good defensemen as well during your time in Barry. Obviously, Brant Clark, Nathan Allenson, and now the, the the new captain, Connor Punnett. What have you kind of learned from, from some of those guys that uh, you kind of grew up through the organization with and kind of watched somebody like like some guys like that, uh, how they go about their business and how they, they play on the ice? Do you try to, try to take something from those guys? Yeah, Nate, Nate and Connor's uh, maturity in their game and definitely uh, – helped me get my feet wet here in the OHL and helped me through my rookie year and everything. So they were great. Uh, and obviously Brent's a special player, uh, hopefully going to make LA this year and good things for him. And he's just a special player. And it, it was, uh, it was really cool to watch him over his junior career. What, what is, as coach Williamson, what, what's his uh, kind of message to you guys this year and, and you specifically, like how has he been through this whole process? He's obviously developed a lot of players that have gone on to play at the NHL level. So, um, you know what? What is he kind of trying to tell you about uh, about you know this next step in your career and making sure that uh, you're doing all the right things on and off the ice to make that jump uh, eventually? Yeah, definitely. Just making sure uh, you got all those good habits on my game and not not letting go of those habits here in Barry that I would have at, at the Edmonton level or at the NHL level. Um, so just keeping keep reminding me that I got to play my game and everything and keep getting better consistently. And just for the people out there that want to know about your play style, you know, six foot, one hundred seventy four pounds listed on elite prospects. Sometimes uh, people aren't too happy with, uh, with with their listing there. But what what type of player do you want to be as a defenseman? And what uh, what do you think your biggest strength is for Barry? Yeah, I think my uh, speed and my and my smarts and my skating uh, definitely the the things I, I contribute the most in Barry. And I think I'm just looking to bring it all around uh, to a game and just some offensive ability here. Bo Aiki, the Barry Colts defenseman and Edmonton Oilers second round draft pick in 2023. Thanks so much for taking some time and best of luck with Barry this season and what's to come for you in the future. Thank you. Thanks to Bo Aiki for that chat and and congratulations to him on being selected by a Canadian market in the second round. I'm sure uh, Oilers fans will want to keep up on uh, his season down here with Barry being their, their power play quarterback. Again, under the tutelage of Brant Clark, I'm sure he learned uh, a lot of good things. So really look forward to seeing him be the 
the main guy this year for the Barry Colts on the back end. We're going to take a quick commercial break on the show today, and we're going to come back with our other two interviews on today's show. So stay right here. We'll be right back on OHL Overtime right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network, brought to you by Wild Bill's Auto Repair. Wild Bill's Auto Repair is your local center for auto maintenance and repair in the Niagara region. Since 2012, Wild Bill's Auto Repair and Body Shop has been helping customers stay safe and confident on the road, knowing their vehicles in top running condition through their services. Located at 7868 Oakwood Drive in Niagara Falls, the garage started as a tribute to the owner's father, William Robert Hunter, who passed away, continuing the same community spirit and high level of service which customers came to expect from him back at Hunter's Auto Repair. Their multi-award winning auto shop has earned the trust of the Niagara community with its fair treatment of all customers who can feel confident they'll get the trustworthy advice and repairs during their visit. Their experienced crew loves meeting new people and looks forward to forming a lasting partnership for the care of your cars. To find out more or to book service, contact them today. 905-358-7868 or wildbillsauto.ca. Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. Pets bring immense joy to our homes, becoming an integral part of our families. But this living, loving experience often requires a little extra care and attention. That's where Global Pet Foods comes in, with owners and staff ready to support you every step of the way. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Proud to sponsor the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Since 1999, Niagara Dental Clinic has been helping thousands of patients achieve natural-looking smiles with the confidence to show them off. Sean Battelle and his wife Anne, both licensed denturists, bring a wealth of skill and experience to the warm and friendly atmosphere to their Niagara Falls location at 5501 Drummond Road. And their on-site Niagara Hearing Clinic offers free hearing tests and a variety of services to fit your needs. This family-run practice takes pride in providing superior care and service to their patients, along with the best premium products available on the market. Get the best work done at a more reasonable price. Niagara Dental Clinic is here to help. Protect your teeth with a mouth guard, replace missing teeth, and get better hold with your dental implants. Call them today for a free consultation at 905-353-1552 or check them out online at NiagaraDentureClinic.com. Niagara Denture Clinic, creating natural smiles in the Niagara region for 25 years. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network, the Niagara region's best local source for North American sports podcasting coverage. By sports fans, for sports fans. Welcome back to part two of today's OHL Overtime episode right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network brought to you by Wild Bill's Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012 in honor of the late William Robert Hunter. Today we are highlighting the Barry Colts as we are about two weeks into the OHL season so far. Look forward to what we're going to discuss in the second part of today's episode. Firstly, we're going to start off with local Niagara boy, born and raised here, Ty York. Discusses his kind of trajectory to the OHL and as well, Marty Williamson being a big part of his hockey career at the minor minor midget level and now obviously with the Barry Colts lads. Two years going into his third year here. So here is Niagara native Ty York and this player interview is brought to you by Global Pet Foods where pets are undeniably part of the family. Visit any four of their great Niagara region locations, Global Pet Foods. Back on OHL Overtime with Barry Colts forward and Niagara native, that would be Ty York, Niagara Falls born, now living in Niagara in the Lake. Ty, uh, first off, what has it been like the last few years being around this Barry Colts team with some some great players that have come through? For you, like watching guys like Evan Veerling and, 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 and Ethan Cardwell and even Brant Clark on the defensive side of things. What have you kind of tried to learn from those guys and how fun was it kind of watching them play and trying to grow your game? Yeah, it's, it's been great here the past three years, I'd say. Watching those guys come in, like you said, Ethan and Evan and even Brant, watching them play, just taking a couple things away from them to improve my game and move on 
for me to the next level. So just take a couple things away. And what uh, what's your best memory growing up here in Niagara as far as playing minor hockey and just uh, just moving up through the ranks and then eventually moving north a little bit to Barry? You know, what what were some of your memories growing up in, in Niagara minor hockey? I would say definitely coming to watch the watching the Ice Dogs play. Usually, I was we watched a lot of ice dogs games growing up so it's kind of it's kind of fun to play against the ice dogs as your hometown but it's even better to play in niagara when you get friends and family to come watch you so i notice whenever you do come home and you do pick up a point against the ice dogs almost a whole section is cheering for you is that uh, friends and family that always try to make it to the games whenever you're playing here in niagara yeah usually my parents sort out a sort out a section with the with the team so we usually get a section and usually if i get a point it it's pretty loud, but it's always awesome to play in that barn. Another uh, Niagara connection with Marty Williamson, your head coach, obviously coached here with the, the Ice Dogs for a long time. Was that kind of interesting for you coming in uh, into Barry and, and, and being coached by Marty after seeing him behind the bench in Niagara for a long period of time? And just how, how important has he been in your development as a hockey player? Yeah, Marty, Marty's been awesome for me. It's kind of crazy that I'm a Niagara, Niagara boy and he uh, coached in Niagara coach our triple a team so he's done a lot for me for sure to get me here and improve my game so it's it's kind of nice that it's him of being coach and taking a lot of things away from him because he coached a lot of great players so his career so just to take a couple things a day away from him is kind of cool to play for him again you had a good playoff run last year you, you specifically had five points in the playoffs but it, it was cut short a little bit against the north bay battalion what is the the message from the coaching staff as far as what did they want to see from you guys this year after coming off a season that ended a little bit earlier than you had wanted to and using that as motivation as you continue forward as a, as a young hockey player and taking an, another step one day yeah definitely sucked last year losing game seven against north bay but they're telling they're pretty much telling us just the battle every day and bring it bring it all and we have a great team right now and really young and older guys right now like take everything you can and battle and grind every day and the team's pretty well right now so we get a win tonight but come every day come ready to work so we can go far in the playoffs and have a good run this year and specifically for you what what are the coaching staff wanting to see from you to take another step in your game and and what are what are you trying to work on maybe specifically as a winger on this team and wanting to to take that next step into a leadership role going into your third year now what's a big step that you're looking to make and what the coaching staff's expecting from you yeah they're they're looking at me just to come here have a good like battle battle every day and bring a lot to the table bring a lot so you can show the young guys because I've been here for three years so just to show them the routes and help them along and come ready to work and do the work. Barry Colts forward and Niagara native Ty York. Ty thanks so much for doing this and forward to seeing what you're going to do with Barry this year. You have a little uh, juice in the step whenever you, you do come down to Niagara so look forward to, uh, to seeing you down here as well. Yes thank you again. Thanks to Ty York for taking some time and uh, discussing some of his uh, fond memories of growing up down here in the Niagara region going to Niagara Ice Dog games and there's always a whole section you can know when Ty York gets a point playing against the Niagara Ice Dogs, even as a member of the Barry Colts, an entire section has uh, goes nuts for Ty York, always the fa- a fan favorite despite being an away player. So we're going to take you to our last interview of the day, and that is going to be wrapping up with those three players, with the head coach and general manager of the team, that would be Marty Williamson. A great chat with Marty about the three players that you just heard from, as well as his expectations for the Barry Colts this year, and uh, some of those great players that have uh, graduated on, like Brant Clark and Ethan Cardwell. So here is former Niagara Ice Dogs head coach and current general manager and head coach of the well-run Barry Colts program, Marty Williamson. And this last interview today will be brought to you by the Niagara Employment Help Center, helping people find work in Niagara since 1983. Check out their up-to-date job board at ehc.on.ca to find your next work opportunity today, the Niagara Employment Help Center. Please be back on OHL Overtime with Barry Colts general manager and head coach. That would be Marty Williamson. Marty, thanks so much for taking some time. Exciting time with the new season always. It's like the first day of school being back. And with the, the dual roles, I'm sure you've been working all offseason. But uh, just how has it been, you know, the first couple of weeks of the season, getting everything going and knowing that there's still a long way to go? Well, there is, and it's exciting, though. It's, uh, it's a good group of guys. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the familiar faces are gone. You know, Ethan Cardwell had been here for a long time, and Evan Verling and Brent Clark. You know, that group of guys had been here for a long time with me. And uh, so it's a new group, the Colbo Dwines and the Bo Aikies and Jelly. Bo Jelly's what have kind of taken over. And, uh, you know, so we're excited about the group. We're young. Uh, you know, we know with young, there's uh, the consistency is something that we're lacking right now. And uh, But our good first weekend, you know, we got two out of three, and we just – played an inconsistent young hockey game in the third game so we got to kind of build on that and kind of build the chemistry with these young guys. 
and you talk about those young guys, just how important were maybe some of those guys like Brant Clark, Ethan Cardwells in their development and watching how they approached every single day as pros and hopefully, you know, not just from the coaching staff, but from their own teammates that are going to go on to do uh, good things at the pro level that they kind of learn from them and, and know what it takes to kind of be that type of pro. Well, you're right. They were great examples and, uh, you know, no, no better than Brant Clark. I thought he really took Bo Aiki under his wing and it was kind of like a big brother, little brother type thing. But you'd see them at the end of the practice and, you know, walk in the blue line and you know Clarky telling him about where he's going to look at and where his eyes have to be and uh, you know so it's great information I know they have a great relationship and uh, you know hopefully both of them are playing in the NHL someday against each other so uh, and then we had the same thing with our forward group it's one of the reasons that you know we kind of made a statement last year that we were not moving our young guys Cole Dwayne was not available and Bo Aiki was not available and that took us out of a lot of uh, deals that were out there but uh, we, we believe in these guys we thought they could contribute last year which they both did and we believe they're going to be really good for us down the road. That's a great segue, Marty, because uh, we spoke earlier on the episode to, to Cole Baudouin and Bo Aiki. You know, you've developed a lot, helped develop a lot of players that have went on to that pro level. So how do you tell them to just stay in the moment and not think too much about the pressure and people that are going to be on them all year long? Trying to remain in the moment and, and do well for this Barry Colts team right now. Yeah, Aiks was a little bit easier than some I've had, you know, like Dougie Hamilton and guys like that were really kind of preoccupied with, you know, where they were going to go. Bo's kind of been, you know, whoever takes me, takes me. He knew he was going to get drafted. He didn't know if it was going to be late first round or second round, but he knew he was going in that area, and he really didn't have a, a lot to kind of, you know, and, and even even with the situation last year with Brent coming back, you know, that took him out of the first power play unit. That, that changed his role in our hockey team, and he didn't bat an eyelash at it. He didn't pout. He didn't, uh, he was happy for Brent was back, was going to help us win hockey games, and, uh, you know, Aix has been kind of really a dream-type kid since he came here, so, you know, we were, you know, real happy to see his development and him to get drafted, and really, he was Edmonton's first pick, you know, so it's it's kind of ironic and uh, how well he did. Yeah, and, you know, when he comes back, do you notice a little bit different, maybe a little bit extra juice when they come back from those NHL camps and putting on those NHL jerseys maybe gives them a little bit more fire to know that they got to put in the extra work because they're coming back to juniors and, and making sure that they do all the right things to make that uh, that eventual jump full-time? Well, that's exactly, you know, and he, he was kind of a mini Brant Clark when he came back to Aitchison and Tiller and a few of the guys that we have that, uh, you know, the 05s and 06s and, and telling them that, you know, it is another step and you have to work hard and uh, how much work he's going to have to put in to be able to get to that kind of level so you know this is what the, this league's about it's a development league you know we all push for as many wins as we can get but the bottom line is we're developing these yet guys to be pros or else to be good you know student athletes going through youth sports Right, and you talk about the development portion of it. We spoke to another uh, local Niagara boy, Ty York, and, and he told us that uh, you coached him in, my, in minor midget as well, so kind of moving your way up up the ranks, and, he, and he's had you over here in, in Barrie with some Niagara ties. So how, how cool is it to, to have been coaching Ty, and what have you liked from a very young age, obviously, to wanting to choose him to be a Barry Colt and, and having him be part of this program? Well, he's a great kid and a great teammate. Uh, you know, he's got an easygoing attitude. He's another one of these kind of guys. You know, Ty kind of went through that COVID period because he had to go down and play in that uh, USPL league in the States or whatever, and he played there for a year. Um, I had him. You know, he's just one of those guys, the puck seems to follow him. You know, he's not the fanciest guy in the world, but uh, somehow he falls into goals. He's in the right area. You know, and that's that's a skill. It's not just luck when you keep doing it. Uh, he, his timing is very good, you know, and he'll do, you know, whatever role you kind of give him. So, you know, he's killed penalties for us. He's got power play. You know, so again, Yorkie's uh, just been a real good teammate and we're real happy to have him here. Yeah, and you always know when he gets a point in Niagara, you got a whole section yeah, uh, cheering yeah. for him on the Niagara Falls boy. But lastly, Cole Baudouin, obviously a highly talented player. I know he's very intense, doesn't like to talk a lot on game days, so we had to get him on a, on a non-game day. So what's his development been like, and how are you going to kind of help him through this process with all the expectations on him going in, into next June? Well, I think his development's been outstanding. You know, I mean, last year we lost Evan Verling in like game one of the playoffs there, and, you know, he took on a big role in that series. And, you know, we, and we last year lost Gelsma for a while in that series too, and if you told me we would lose those two guys and we still lose 2-1 in game seven, you know, I would have been a little surprised at how well. But Cole stepped into that role, and he really stepped up for us big in the playoffs. So that gave us a bit of a look at what we think we're going to have this year, and, and we've seen it so far. He had a great preseason with points in that. He's been a little stink-bitten in the first couple games. Games, but you know he, he's just a horse out there he drives the pace of the play you know he reminds me an awful lot of Brian Little who I had here you know and just that his practice 
habits, his game habits are just, he's just a driven kid. He'll will himself to do things out there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, he's, you know, we're, I'm awfully happy I've got him on this team and we've got him for a couple more years. Last question for you, just coming off of last year, the sour taste, seven games, the hard fought series against that North Bay team, second round. Is there anything that you really need to say or, or the coaching staff about coming back motivated? Or do you think those guys going through that experience will hopefully, you know, take something positive from it and use it as fuel as they continue on, not only with the OHL, but to go through adversity and hard times within their, their lives as young men? Yeah, I think so. You know, we're all, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's more the players, I think, than the coaches have short memories. And uh, I mentioned that we played in North Bay to start the season. And I kind of mentioned, you know, that we had it, you know, in our, in our, our burr in our bonnet a little bit. But, uh, you know, we won, we kind of swept them and, uh, you know, but it's kind of behind us. It really is. This is a different group. Um, the whole mentality is, is different in our development stage with this group a little bit. So, you know, but again, it, it, it shows that this is a tough league. You know, you really need to execute if you want to be good in this league. Um, I've said to them many times, I think it's easy to be average, you know, and the only, you know, you need to be good because it gives you an opportunity to be great. And that's our kind of goal with our development with these guys is try and be good every night because you will have those nights where you'll be great. But if you're just average, you know, it's hard to get the grades. So, you know, it's uh, that's kind of our message to them gaming game out is as far as them developing and then hopefully that, you know, we can get into the playoffs and give this group some experience. Very cool. Ted Coach and General Manager Marty Williamson. Marty, thanks so much for taking some time. And I know there's a lot of people that uh, still have fond memories of you <laughs> down in Niagara with those uh, great Ice Dog teams. So thanks so much for doing this and look forward to the Barry Colts. It always seems to be a fun competitive team to watch all year long. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I've got a lot of friends in Niagara. I love the area and I love my time down there. Always great to catch up with Marty Williamson and uh, obviously respect his work that he's done for uh, not only the Barry Colts, but in his past with the Niagara Ice Dogs and just developing so many great players that have gone on to play in the pros and just always great to pick Marty's brain for a few minutes about just the game of hockey and, and some of the great players that he's currently coaching right now that we spoke to today. Thank you to him for that. That's going to wrap up today's episode uh, for the Barry Colts kind of outlook on their season and and hopefully you guys enjoyed listening to a couple of their players and from Marty Williamson himself about the expectations for this Barry Colts squad coming off a hard fought second round exit in game seven to the North Bay Battalion last season and the Barry Colts always seem to be competitive. They might make a, a, a move or two that you might think why would they do that but it always seems to work out in the end and it seems like Marty always has an idea of, of how he wants to go about the team and it always ends up seeming to work out in the end getting value for certain players and then using those picks to to go out and, and get other players that really fit his system and and what the the culture is up there in Barry and they're always just a competitive team so it's always fun to watch throughout the season especially for me covering uh, the Niagara Ice Dogs get to see Barry play six times so it's always a good matchup with them if you guys have enjoyed the episode today again if you've enjoyed the video version of the podcast hit make sure to hit like hit subscribe smash that bell for all updates on video versions of our podcast that get released here on the network and if you listen to this today on any of our audio platforms thank you very much for listening to us on demand make sure you're following the podcast on x at our armchair gm pod as well as our social media platforms facebook instagram tiktok threads we're on all of those for you guys if you enjoy that sort of thing so until next time my name is brandon caputo and you've been watching ohl overtime brought to you by wild bills auto repair we'll talk to you again very soon you're listening to the armchair gm sports network